Hello and welcome to the Doomsday McDoom Scroller Show, a philosophical science fiction podcast featuring refreshingly heretical complaints about daily news and social media. Today's rant will come from news of the recent midterm elections in the USA, and Doomsday will prove that government is not the problem most people think it is. And that's no matter your nationality, no matter what country you're in or which elections you vote in. But first, uh, introductions are in order. I am your fictional host, Doomsy, and sometimes the show's writers have me referring to myself in the third person breaking the fourth wall. This is not a normal show. If you want to complain about my heretical complaints, which would be as useless as protesting a cartoon character, or if you simply want Doomsie's backstory, just visit www.doomsiemcdoomscroller.com. For now, I'll just say that I've been lost in space-time, possibly another dimension and away from Earth for so long that I don't consider myself part of civilized culture anymore. If you get the video feed of my broadcasts, uh, you can see that. Right now, I'm on, looks like some kind of frozen tundra kind of planet. You know, it's hot cold out here. I I gotta wear a space suit. I mean, even if it wasn't The temperature, I don't think I could breathe the atmosphere. I'm pretty sure I couldn't. I don't know where exactly I am. Okay, some other galaxy, maybe some other, I don't know, parallel universe. I'm not sure. It's going to take me a while to get back. Uh, And it's already been a while. And so, you know, I'm I'm not part of you guys anymore. I'm not part of civilized culture. That's why you'll hear me in the show refer to your culture or you civilized people or just you people, meaning the 8 billion of you. And that's soon to be 9 billion. You know, I mean, you were just 4 billion, what, 47 years ago. Now you're 8 billion. So, yeah, you're going to be 9 billion because you're always laboring intensively to increase food production. And the food surpluses fuel your explosive population growth. While some smarty pants announces that, you know, oh, population growth is out of control. Well, it's not. Let's, let's get into a rant about elections. Okay. Voting, government. Uh, but before that, let's have a look at this. Just because, uh, why not? You know, it seems good for at least a glance every episode. In my opinion, really. Let's have a look here. Okay, can I get this to project on my visor? Uh, You don't really need to see it, but for people getting the video feed, I might as well. I might as well show you what I'm reading. But, okay, here we go. Can you see that? Of course, those listening to the podcast can't, so I will read it. This is from nationalgeographic.com. There's no... Here's the title. This magazine says uh, the race issue. There's there's no scientific basis for race. It's a made-up label. It's been used to define and separate people for millennia, but the concept of race is not grounded in genetics. All right. That's a lovely headline. How about this one here? It's from uh, Scientific American. The concept of race is a lie. Race, they put in quotes. The concept of race is a lie. Even the ancient Greeks knew it. Even the ancient Greeks knew it. And maybe we got another one here. 
the scientific fallacy of the human biological concept of race. So I just thought I'd mention that. You know, so many people, sometimes they, I, I don't know what, maybe they self-identify as woke or whatever and they want to they want to talk about race and have a discussion about you know racism and talk about race and race this and race that well you should be talking about how there's no such thing as race really there's no such thing as race if you aren't mentioning that you know can you be can you even think of yourself as anti-racist there is no such thing this is from medium some article by Kristen Hovitt there's no such thing as race at the genetic level. The part of the human genome that makes our skin and hair look different is tiny compared to what we share. Race is 100% a social construct, though it is still being used as a biological category. Okay, I thought that was just something we're sharing. Uh, you know, why not keep that in mind? People want to talk about race. You want to talk about something that doesn't exist? Unfortunately, racism is all over the place. Unfortunately. But there's no such thing as race. So, let's keep that in mind. Okay. Keep that in mind no matter what the rant is about. No matter what the article is. No matter what, what uh, the episode, the theme of the episode Of the Doomsday McDoom Scroller Show. Okay, so t today it's about about the elections that just happened, and they're still going on, right? I think well, there's some guy who likes to talk about vampires and werewolves on the campaign trail, going against some other guy who who's a community leader and advocating a, a zombie kind of a salvationist effect. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, but it doesn't matter how that's going to turn out. Here, look at this right here. This is just some general info. I think this is from Yahoo News. U.S. 2022 midterm election results. So, look at Senate, you know, <laughs> 50, 49. <laughs> House. 213 Dems, 220 Republicans. And then governors, 24 Democratic governors, 26 Republican governors. What a joke. You, think any, you really think anything's going to... Look, how much does your vote matter? I don't know. I'm not telling you not to vote. Okay, I, I wouldn't do that. I think you got to use everything possible to to fix things. To fix things that you're ruining, that your culture is ruining. And every possible thing you can do, do it. Okay, but uh, let me tell you, government is not the problem you think it is. It's not. I know you want to blame government for everything that's going on, high gas prices, just inflation, but jobs, 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 you know, the economy, this, that, you know, it's the government, the, the corruption, you know, it's ridiculous how it's always, it, you know, it's, it's something that you got to recognize. It's a product. It's a product of your culture. The government is. And those politicians, they aren't leaders. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get, I got some good news for you. Okay, the good news, I'm going to have to explain the good news. Okay, because the good news is that the government is not the problem. I'm going to prove that. Okay, I'm going to prove that the government is not the problem that you think it is. It's not. So let me go uh, 
Let me find the article. I got I got proof ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to rock and roll here. You know, I'm I, I do some doom scrolling just about every day. You know, as I try to navigate my way back to the Milky Way galaxy. And uh you know, it, it's always something. Okay, so let's look at something right now that supposedly what was something that was accomplished, something positive done by the government. And recently, well here, let me just bring this up on my on my visor so you can see it. The Clean Water Act at fifty. So this was a big report a big report done on the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. I think earlier in that year, but that year, uh, 2022, this year, earlier this year, or it was before 2020, I think, <laughs> before that Trump guy got out of office. Oh, no, I think it was after that because it was the, the Supreme Court judges he appointed. People were like, uh, he, uh, they made some decision that people said, like, gutted the EPA or or declawed the EPA. It's like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, the, the EPA has been, you know, doing so much good for us, right? I mean, things are just going to get worse now. You know, there's something's got to be done. That's some type of legislation you need. So, uh, on this, on this report, the Clean Water Act at 50 promises half kept at the century mark. This is a, this is the little title on that. Let's see. We can scroll through here. Here's the first graphic. Clean Water Act falling short. Okay, let's look at this article right here. This headline, this is from Yale University. Maybe you've heard of that school. The Clean Water Act at 50 is the headline for this article. The Clean Water Act at 50. From Yale University. Big successes, more to be done. This is the title. Well, the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. Now, can you guess what the Clean Water Act was about? You know what that legislation was? Okay, here's another part of the, the headline of this article. Sparked by the 1970s environmental movement, the Clean Water Act, which marks its 50th anniversary this month, that was in October, transformed America's polluted rivers. The Delaware, once an industrial cesspool, is one of the success stories. But its urban stretches remain a work in progress. The Clean Water Act. The Delaware River, once an industrial cesspool. And oh no, you know, the Trump's Supreme Court declawed the EPA. Really? Really? So you're going to have problems with this now? The Clean Water Act. There's a big, big font in this article. You scroll down on this page. Scroll down on this page. Here's this big, big paragraph. This is still the Yale article. The Clean Water Act provided the government with the legal framework to regulate pollution and the funding to clean it up. They provided the government with the legal framework to regulate pollution and funding to clean it up. Okay, so here's proof. This is, here comes the proof. Okay, the 50th anniversary. Let's look. Let's look at what because this is the Clean Water Act, right? I mean, this is not 
uh, a few paragraphs that was slipped into one of those what omnibus bills that, like cover everything There's these big budget things and it's just slipped in there a bunch of those politicians they don't know what they're voting on right it's just a money budget thing pay raise in there for themselves right it's not one of those this is the clean water act this that's all that this was about all this this entire legislation that was voted on that was passed 50 years ago the clean water act what do you think it's about <laughs> polluted water it's about clean water it's about right cleaning up rivers lakes regulating pollution okay how has it done really because at the top of this it says the clean water act at 50 big successes comma more to be done but the clean water act at 50 colon big successes really really you're gonna pat yourself on the back for that one you civilized folks yeah okay let's let's have a look at these big successes okay not this article this had something to do you're getting the video feed here i just clicked on that was about the supreme court's attack on the clean water act was too extreme for john roberts clean water act okay you know so it was attacked whoop de doo okay here we go oh there's yet another article doomsday's got too many tabs open this is a Newsweek headline. There is no such thing as race. There's no such thing as race. And that obviously should have been in a tab farther to the left. So Doomsie's clicking. I'll find what I'm. I'll find what I'm getting after. There's no such thing as race at the genetic level. Is another headline. Maybe I read that one already. Lost in my tabs. Okay, here we go. This is proof that the government is not the problem. Are you ready? And, and I'll explain. I will explain why this is good news. Okay, th this is good news. Because now you know. Okay, here it is. This is from thehill.com. Changing America, underlined in blue and red. Oh, so bipartisan, putting both colors up there. Isn't that, isn't that just nice? Shared destiny, shared responsibility. Underneath the, the logo for this page or the logo for the section of this website, Changing America. Now keep in mind, you know, this is, this is about the USA, but you think the situation's any better? on other continents, other countries. No. No. It's not. Okay, so here we are in this article. Big headline here. Are you ready? This is proof. This is proof that government is not the problem. Government is not the problem you think it is. And and I'll explain the good news about that, okay? But first, let's look at the proof. Okay, headline. About half of U.S. water too polluted for swimming, fishing, or drinking, report finds. And uh, you scroll, there's this lovely picture of a couple pipes sticking out of the ground in some stream or riverbank just spewing filth and the caption is water contamination yeah, quite common huh okay so here's the story at a glance a new report by the environmental integrity project has found that 50 years since the passage of the clean water act the country's waterways are severely polluted. The report 
found about half of the river and stream miles in lake acres across the U.S. are too polluted for swimming, fishing, or drinking. <laughs> Don't drink it. Don't eat the fish that you catch out of it. Don't even... Don't even go swimming in it. Unless you're looking to make a trip to the hospital. Researchers argued the Environmental Protection Agency needs to update water assessment regulations and allocate more funding for staff and resources. That's the third bullet point in the story at a glance. So then we, the first paragraph of the, of the story, the article here, from, this is from thehill.com, we're still on that page. The Clean Water Act, passed into law 50 years ago, has fallen well short of its goals, a new analysis finds. Nearly half of the rivers and streams across the U.S. are considered too polluted to meet quality standards for swimming, recreation, aquatic life, fish consumption, or as drinking water sources. So then, and then the second paragraph is about, about the study. Uh, Environmental Integrity Project, a nonpartisan nonprofit formed by the formed by former Environmental Protection Agency attorneys, published a report that found alarming results of water quality tests in all 50 states. More than 700,000 miles of waterways, about 51% of assessed river and stream miles, are impaired by pollution. That's in addition to another 55% of lake acres and 26% of estuary miles. The report defines impaired as waters that are too polluted to meet standards for swimming and recreation, aquatic life, fish consumption, or as drinking water. So just, just filth, basically, just poison. Most, most water in the USA. So. This is about government. Governments are what, in charge of countries, supposedly. This story is about the USA. You think it's any better in China? You think it's any better in China? Situation over there? Come on. So, you know, this is. You do, yeah, I lump you all. I lump you all together. You're all in the same in the same boat, same basket, east and west, east and west alike. Some states have done better than others, says the article. But, geez, geez, Louise. There's another headline on that same story. This is from the World Economic Forum. 50% of U.S. lakes and rivers are too polluted for swimming, fishing, or drinking. Oh, well, gee. Thanks, Clean Water Act. Thanks, big successes. What? Big successes? Clean Water Act? Are you kidding me? 50 years ago, the U.S. passed the Clean Water Act with the goal of ensuring fishable, swimmable water across the U.S. by 1983. Yeah, fail. How can they say big successes? Oh, the what? It's the not in my backyard stuff, right? The Delaware, I suppose. The Delaware, the parts where most people have a look see at the Delaware River. Maybe that that got cleaned up. Most everywhere else. Let's look at this one. This article here by Lizzie Rosenberg from greenmatters.com. Half of U.S. waterways too dirty to swim, fish, or drink from, report finds. Now, now, really, this is proof that government is not the problem. Here's the proof. Look, about 50 years ago, the Clean Water Act was passed to protect natural waterways in the U.S., Lizzie Rosenberg writes. But sadly, the U.S. hasn't come close to achieving its goals. 
A recent report conducted by the Environmental Integrity Project estimates that half of rivers, streams, and lakes are simply too dirty to drink from, fish, or even swim in. So, Clean Water Act? <laughs> Big success? What? What was that? Was that from Yale? That headline? Big successes, but more needs to be, more needs to be done. Gosh, more needs to be done. I'll say most water is poison. Most water is poison in the USA. So here we go down. Here's a, a section of this article on greenmatters.com. Section headlined A New Analysis has found the majority of U.S. waterways are highly polluted. And this is, what, 50 years since the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act. These are the results. These are the results. So here's, here's... Here's the, pr here's the proof that government is not the problem, okay? This, this, these are the results of the Clean Water Act. Okay? Now, the Clean Water Act, that's the best that you can do. That's the best that you civilized people can do. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being facetious. I, you know, I'm not, this is, I'm serious. This is the best that you can do. You, you can't do any better than the Clean Water Act. I mean, the whole, that whole legislation, all of it was just purpose for this one thing. And look how bad, look how, look how effed up all the water got. You know, it's, it's incredible, really. It's the best. What what more can you expect from your government? That's what government does, right? Civilized, quote unquote, leadership, right? You guys aren't leaders. These politicians aren't leaders. Nobody needs billionaires. Nobody needs millionaires. You know, what do you expect from your government? This is, this is what you civilized people do, right? This is what you do. You write laws. You write laws to ban undesirable behavior by people in your culture. Knowing that no behavior has ever been eliminated by passing a law against it. You know that. You know that writing laws doesn't do anything to stop. Stop the behavior that it's meant to stop. That you write them. You build prisons. Right? There's only... That's the only way you have to really, you got this one blanket everywhere, everywhere you go, civilized culture, you got this one blanket punishment. It's all you got, prison. Break a law, get convicted, go to prison. That's the punishment. Only one kind of punishment, no matter what, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation, you write laws that you know people are going to break. You write laws that you know people are going to break. And there's only one thing you can do when those laws are broken. Toss people in prison. It's all you got. It's the only punishment. And, and it's punishment. I mean, you want punishment, right? That's the only, not just response. The only response you have to un undesirable behavior that you write laws against. The only response you have is punishment. And the only punishment you got is this one blanket policy of prison. Oh, 
Okay, you can say, Doomsy, what about, you know, punishable by a fine? That's not a punishment. Those, that's a restriction against poor people. That's not a real punishment. So you only have one response, which is punishment. You only have one punishment, which is prison. And you're constantly writing laws that you know people are going to break. So what, what do you expect? huh? What can your government do better? Nothing. They can't do anything better. The Clean Water Act, that was everything. I mean, that, that's, that's what government's supposed to be doing, right? A according to you all, according to all of you civilized folks, the Clean Water Act, that, that was it. And what a massive failure. What just an incredible failure. But don't blame the government. The government's doing what you expect it to do. It's not the government's fault. Look, look here. Let me bring this article back up, okay? This is from uh, Lizzie Rosenberg on, on greenmatters.com. Okay, so I'll bring this back up here. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Here we go, down the page. Okay, here's a section of this article. What is the Clean Water Act and why isn't it working? Okay, now, here's where you think, oh, Doomsday, look, obviously government is the problem. They, they aren't doing enough. No, no. Okay, let's look under this headline. What is the Clean Water Act and why isn't it working? As a refresher, Lizzie writes, the Clean Water Act was passed in 1972, according to the EPA, to regulate pollution discharge. It sets wastewater standards for different industries as well as national water criteria recommendations for pollutants. It's supposed to be updated every few years, but it hasn't been, which is largely one of the reasons why it most likely isn't working. <laughs> no, it's not. What? It's supposed to be updated every few years, but it hasn't been, which is largely one of the reasons why it most likely isn't working. Come on. Come on. Give it up. Give it up. Really, you need to update. You need to update the Clean Water Act. How you got to update? How you going to update? Uh, don't turn your water into poison. Uh, you know, turning water into poison... It's a bad idea. Probably shouldn't do it. Yeah, you got to update that law. But how? What? What percentage of your body is water? Isn't it most? Isn't it most of the the human body? Most of what mammals are is like water. I think. <laughs> and you're poisoning all the water around you, making it toxic. And you have this Clean Water Act, and now, you, you know, it just catastrophically fails. Most rivers and lakes are just filth, just poisonous, just bad for your health. Bad, bad for the fish, bad for everything. Everything that could drink from it. And... You want to blame it on, on the law. Blame it on the government. Oh, they just didn't update it. <laughs> really? It, it, that's going to be always... How many times you... How many times you going to update it? So, it's supposed to be updated every few years. So, okay. So, you update it every few years. If you were updating it every few years, you know what you get? You get an article just like this one saying... Well, you know, we should have updated it every few months. And then those past five decades, if you were updating this Clean Water Act, updating it every few months, you know what this article would say 50 years later? Well, probably should have updated every few weeks. Yeah, we've got to update the idea that you shouldn't poison, poison the water. 
that not just you, but you know, pretty much every creature needs for its survival. So, no, there's no update. This is the Clean Water Act. There's no mistake in what that legislation was about. And what good did it do you? What good did it do you? <laughs> Most water is poison in the United States. You think it's any better in China, in Europe, in uh, other continents? You're all, you're all doing the same stuff. Government is not the problem. The government's doing what government can do. The Clean Water Act. That's that's the government doing what it's supposed to do, right? It's in charge. That's what else is it gonna do? So, fifty years. What you gonna you want to write another one? You want to update this, update it, and give it another fifty years? Is that really the solution? You want to wait fifty years? So little babies of today, Generation Alpha, little babies. So they'll get to about, what, 35, 40 years old. And what are they going to have? What, 90% of waterways, filth, poison? You're going to rely on the government, you really think? So, so that's proof. That's proof. Government is not the problem. Government's doing it. Now, you may say, oh, the government, uh, government's a problem. Look at inflation. Look at the gridlock in, in Washington or, or Parliament or Congress or whatever. They aren't getting anything done. They aren't doing anything for, for the downtrodden. Yeah, you know, same old, same old. You know, well, what are they going to do? It's, that's just how it is. They're right in laws. You got you had the Clean Water Act. It went for fifty years. Fifty years and now over fifty percent of water is poison. After fifty years of the Clean Water Act, more than fifty percent of water is unclean. So bravo. Bravo. Good job there, civilized folks. So, there's the proof. So, government wasn't messing around in 1972. That's the Clean Water Act. They knew right what they were pointing at. Target was clear. And what's the result? Government is not the problem. Your culture is the problem. Yeah, that's right. It's your culture. Eight billion of you. Your culture is the problem. Okay, and that's really the good news here. It really is. That's the good news. Why? Well, why is that good news, Doomsy? You might have that. Doomsy, you sound crazy. Yeah, well, I don't know. There's different physics in this galaxy, this universe. Maybe it's throwing off my physiology. Maybe I'm going a bit nuts, but I, I just got to look at it. You know, from, from what I see, you know, like you got the 51%, the 49%. The, I mean, come on. You really think anything's going to get fixed? If government was the problem, you would all be screwed. If government was a problem, that's the worst news. Because you know, you know there's, there ain't no fix in that. There is no fix in that. It is just a cluster F. All the corruption, all the fight, even if you think there's some good, honest people who are trying to do some good for them. What are they going to get done, huh? What are they going to accomplish with all the other leeches in the capital of your country? You civilized people. You know, that would be just terrible news. If government was a problem, you would all be screwed. Your little babies, they, they aren't going to have water to drink. 
They will not live a full life if government was a problem. And that, that's the good news. Doomsday's gonna bring you every episode. The problem is not the species. The problem is just one culture. The culture to which eight billion of you now belong. Eight billion. You know, politicians aren't leaders, right? I, do you recall anyone? Any of you older listeners? Do you recall in 1975 some world leaders looking around at the global population going, you know what, you know what we really need? You know what we really need to strive for? Twice as many people. You think that was ever, ever an initiative? Shouldn't someone take credit for that? That they're really leaders? Because according to civilized religions, the human, the human animal, the, it's the greatest thing in the universe. The whole purpose for the whole universe. So doubling the amount of humans, isn't that? It's like doubling the amount of gods. God-like beings, the number of potential worshipers for your God of Abraham or your Allah or your Yeshua or, or whatever. Yeah, no one's taking credit for that. No, quite the opposite, really. Oh, population growth is out of control. No, it's not. It's not out of control. In 1975, you were four billion. The only way you can get to twice the population of that, the only way to double 4 billion to 8 billion is to double the food production. And that's what, you all, that's what you've all been working on for the past 47 years. 47 years before 1975, 2 billion. How is government responsible for that? You want to blame government? Or you either you either blame government for that, or you give them credit for that. Uh, who's who's taking credit? Who's taking blame? Nobody's taking credit or blame for going from two billion to four billion, forty-seven years later, to again forty-seven years later, eight billion. No one's taking credit or blame. The, the, those are those are some significant numbers. Nobody's going to take credit for that. No one's gonna, no one's gonna uh, play the blame game. Politicians aren't leaders; they're not leaders. Government is not the problem. The problem is your culture, the culture of eight billion people, east and west alike, doing everything you possibly can to convert biomass of the earth into human flesh at the fastest rate possible. And that shh is hitting the fan. It's hitting the fan. And you look around at the little babies around, little babies in the strollers, little kids, Generation Alpha. You wanna do another Clean Water Act? Huh? Look what this one did. Clean Water Act, 50 years. What do you get? Mostly poison. Cesspool. Whole country's a friggin' cesspool. You, you, wanna, you wanna complain about government. You think voting is gonna help Gen Alpha. You think, oh, that's just, let's just be politically active. Let's just, uh, let's hope we get the right senators and the right presidents and the right Members of Parliament, the right Imams, the right Popes, the right Billionaires, the right Musks. Well, let's hope Bezos is kind. Let's hope we get some donations. Those people aren't leaders. They're not leaders. That, that's the good news. Okay? It's really good news that government is not the problem. Because you know it's not going to get fixed. You know there's no fix in that. Those people are not leaders. They aren't doing anything, any good. The, 
government is a product of every civilized government. The government of every civilized nation is a product of civilized culture. So it's going to do everything it can to keep civilized culture going. And what is civilized culture? Civilized culture, it's the culture of maximum suffering. Okay, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Doomsday's not going to sugarcoat that. You think, it, you think oh, it means uh, advanced, uh, civilized. It means advanced technology, sophisticated uh, culture. It means civilization. It means uh, being polite. No, it doesn't. That's just in your head. Civilized. That's simply the name of your culture. What, are you trying to tell me that nobody was ever polite before farming and pyramid building? Before people started building pyramids and farming, no one was ever polite? Come on. Scientists have documented altruistic behavior in other species. So don't tell me that, oh, being polite, that's civilized. You think, oh, there wasn't, there wasn't, uh, uh, you, you want to say, you want to, you want it to be a measure of violence? You really want that violence to be, the amount of violence to be a, a measure of uh, civilized culture? Well, then, then y'all fail. Two billion, four billion, eight billion, as you were... One billion turned into two billion. What kind of violence, huh? What kind of violence has your culture seen? Your, your culture is culture of maximum suffering. That's why so, for so long, so many of you have thought that the end of everything is right around the corner. Yeah, I've always remembered this. Um, let me see. I can find it. I'll bring it up here. Uh, it's A B H O T A dot info. I think I wrote that right. A B H O T A. That means a brief history of the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't have this in my favorites or anything. It's been years since I've been to this site. For some reason, I remember that URL. Okay. Doomsday's going to go there. Is it still up? It is still up. The website is still up. <laughs> it says there's a little stamp, time stamp in the left upper left hand corner. Okay, I'll show it to you in case you're getting a video feed. I'm flying through an asteroid field right now, uh, somewhere I don't know, but uh, so it doesn't matter. Let me, sh let me bring this up here. Yeah, the time st the site last updated May 18th, 2011. It might have been around the time I, I had a look at it. But look, it goes back. <laughs> Your civilized culture, culture of maximum suffering and misery. It's been so, so terrible for people since, what, here, uh, 28, 2800 BC. So. 2,000, what, this is 2,000 years, two, five, five, almost 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago. Civilization has been around, what, 10, 12,000 years? Civilized culture? Civilized culture has been warmongering for about 10,000 years. And it took uh, a few thousand for it to get really bad people predicting the end of the world the apocalypse oh this is just an interesting site we don't need to really look at it brief history of the apocalypse uh, that's your culture just thinking that the world is just crap and, and and it's about to just be gone it's so crappy so when you want to complain complain about you know the source of the problem 
The government is a product of civilized culture. It's meant to keep the culture going. Uh, culture, cult, that's what cultures do. All cultures within them, they have mm, memes. I mean, real memetics, not little funny graphics that you post on social media, but like memetics, like genetics that, that propagate a culture from generation to generation. And every culture wants itself to go on. It's going to do what it can to go on. But your culture, civilized culture, it's going to cause extinction. Most of the water is poisonous now. And then, what, sometime around 2050? There'll be more plastic than fish in the ocean. Most of the forests will be gone. Look, it's game over. Okay, so that's, that's always what Doomsday is here to say. Is that your culture is doomed. Humanity, not necessarily. Our species might continue. You know, may, you know maybe I'm going to be the last one alive. I don't know. Because uh, I'm in a... I got some pretty advanced technology here. Got this great space suit. Got a pretty cool ship. I can go anywhere in this galaxy. Looks like I always need the space suit, though. Ain't no planet as fine as Earth. But... It'd take me, what, 30, 40, 50 years to get back? What's going to be left? What's going to be left? It, nothing. Nothing's going to be left if you keep complaining. that If you keep thinking it's the government. If you keep uh, thinking there's different races. And you keep talking about uh, who gets the, the nicest seat at the table. And what the decorations, you know, you're all arguing about, you know, uh, the furniture and the room allotments and the apartment building and you're arguing about the wallpaper and what color the curtain should be and the whole freaking thing's on fire. That's what all your... It seems to me, it seems to doomsie that that's what all the... all the woke stuff is about. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to be treated fairly. Mm-hmm, yeah. But... If you're... If you're on the Titanic... You're, you're on a ship that's sinking. You're on a plane that's crashing. You're, you're in an apartment building that's burning down. You, you know, there's... You, you can cry about rights. But shouldn't... But shouldn't you spend your time talking about, hey, how are we going to get out of this burning building? You know, how are we going to survive this sinking ship, this crashing aircraft? I mean, you need to start talking about it. Ooh, vote. Vote or die. Vote or die. <laughs> yeah. Government is not the problem. Your culture is the problem. And that's good news. Because you can abandon a culture. Your culture can be abandoned. But you know what? There's no fixing your government. It ain't going to be fixed. It ain't going to be fixed. Look at the characters you've got in your parliament, in your congress. Look at them. You really think that they're going to do things that's going to benefit Generation Alpha? Who, who are going to be looking at most forests gone? More plastic than fish in the ocean? You really think Mitch McConnell? Or Joe Biden? I mean, these guys, they're like five minutes older than dirt. You know, what? what are they really thinking ahead? I really, do they really have Gen Alpha in mind? Are they really aware of what's going on? All these people who say they're woke. <laughs> okay. You know, complain about where you sit. 
where you sit on the plane or the bus. Complain about that while every body of water on the planet is getting poisoned. You know, vote for politicians that are, are going to do what? Going to do what for you? Government's not the problem. Clean Water Act. Clean water. There's no mistake in what that's about. And that was everything a government can do. That's everything a government should do, right? Right? To protect. Protect the drinking water. For your little babies growing up. So, so you want to you wanna pass another one? You want to think, oh, let's, okay, just the, n the next election. Next election, we'll get it right. We'll pass a law then. 51%, 55%. 55% of lake acres, of lake acreage, river miles, river and stream miles. 55, 51 to 55%. Too polluted to even go swimming in. You know, and you want to complain. That, that's the result of the Clean Water Act. So you want to complain about government? The government did its job. Right? It's doing the best it can. That's the best you can do. It really is. It really is. That's the best your government can do. Because your government is a product of your culture. A culture that's, that's bent on mass destruction and suffering. The culture that caused what genocide look there were people in north america for more than a dozen thousand years prior to farmers pyramid builders getting to getting to the continent and over the course of thousands and thousands of years they didn't have, uh, what, most, most water being poisoned? So, so look, it's possible. It's possible. You don't have to turn everything into a cesspool garbage pit dump around you. That's not written into your DNA. You people, you 8 billion civilized people ruining the planet that I'm from, that I hope to find again. I, maybe I can get there with some type of trans-dimensional teleportation jump. I don't know. Maybe it's going to take decades at some kind of warp speed. What, what's going to be there when I get back, huh? Mid-century. If it takes me a few decades, mid-century. More plastic than fish, huh? Most forests gone. So I'll be an old man getting there. And what uh, the babies you have now, the babies, they'll be what in their 30s, about to get you know, jostling for political power in society. And, and, and what kind of society? What, what's going to happen to your economy? What well, one little virus can do to your economy? Most forests gone? More plastic than fish in the ocean? You do know that that means game over, right? The, your civilized economies are never going to bounce back from that. They're never going to come back from that. That's that done. So, Gen Alpha, they need something else. Because it doesn't matter if you're talking, you know, communism, capitalism, Marxism, socialism, no matter what kind of ism you're using for your economy in a civilized culture. You get, you get pyramid builders, you get the socioeconomic hierarchy, you get the peasants at the bottom, you get the nobles in the middle, the royals at the top, and that's collapsing. That's going to collapse, all right? <laughs> well, what good is a Ferrari? and a mega yacht if uh, drinkable water is the most valuable thing in the world.
You know, who, who are you going to trade? Who are you going to trade? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a... You know, I can see myself getting back to Earth in, what, 50 years, 40 years, 30 years. And, yeah, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm not trading. I'm not trading this liter of drinkable water. I'm not going to trade that for your Rolls Royce. Sorry, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to trade it for, what, a joyride shot in your rocket in orbit. I, I don't need that. I'm doomsday. Look, right, right now, I'm entering the atmosphere of some strange alien planet. If you're saying this in case you aren't getting the video feed. You know, but, you know, I've had my share of space travel, but even if I hadn't, what am I going to do with, you know, what am I going to do with a nice day at the spa when, when drinkable water is hard to come by? Oh, you can complain all you want about government, but government's not the problem. And you better start talking better start talking. You need to include Gen Z and Gen Alpha in the conversation. You, you, need, to, you need to confess, you Gen Xers, that you were wrong. That, that everything about civilized culture is just, it's unsustainable. It's never been sustainable. Never will be. And, and you need to admit that. And you need some fresh minds thinking about how to move beyond this culture of farming and pyramid building. It doesn't mean you have to give up agriculture. Farming is not agriculture, for one thing. Now let's get that straight. Farming is not ag It's grossly inaccurate to equate the two. Not just grossly inaccurate, it's detrimental really to say farming is that it's not farming is a very specific type of ag agriculture and it's probably the most descriptive label for farming is that it's holy war agriculture it's holy war agriculture that's how you you go from 1 billion to 2 billion to 4 billion to 8 billion well, there's going to be nine billion because you're always working to to increase food production. That's a war. The life of every organism arises from the death of other organisms. So you're talking about two billion to four billion, eight billion. You're going to be nine billion in what another fifteen years or so. Uh, that's a war. Holy War agriculture. So you, agriculture is possible without doing it at the Holy War scale, at the Holy War level. You don't have to wage war. Now, you do have to wage war if you want to keep building pyramids and having pharaohs, if you want Trumps and Bidens and Putins and Musks and... Uh, you know, if you want kings, if you if you want royalty, yeah, you you better you better keep waging war, building pyramids. If you want to have these uh, demigods, if you want to keep pushing this delusion of grandeur, but not necessary. It's not necessary. Here's what's doomed your culture not humans not necessarily you could give up a culture that's going to cause extinction you don't have to you don't have to go down with that ship you, you just don't and you need to have that conversation so if, if you don't want to if you don't want to be a political activist if if your voter apathy is if your voter apathy is just seems too powerful that's okay 
The, the, the most significant thing you can do is talk to Gen Z, talk to Gen Alpha. Tell them. Tell them about the elephant in the room. Okay, stop being an Egyptian crocodile. Stop it. Ain't doing anybody any good. You got to have these conversations. You know, I, I know it's hard to look at these articles about the pollution and the destruction and what's happening, but it, you got to find the good news in there about the blame game, pointing the finger. Okay, it's not, it's not the fault of the species. It's not the fault of the government. Politicians aren't leaders. Okay, the truth is, it's just this one culture that is now 8 billion of you. East and West. You're all the same. So government is not the problem. That There's good news there. Because you know that ain't getting fixed. If government was the problem, you'd all be screwed. Let's look at those people in the government. Look how they get things done. Look how they don't get things done. Look what they're doing for anybody. You want to put, put together another Clean Water Act? You, you really want to wait to see how that turns out? You really think, oh, they just... They need to improve the legalese. They need to update that every couple years. How about every couple months? How about every couple weeks? How about every couple hours? That's every couple hours. Let's update what the idea that you shouldn't shouldn't crap in the water that you need to drink. You shouldn't poison the earth that fish need to swim in. That all animals need to drink from. That's got to be updated, huh? That's the problem. That's what you're telling me. That's what you're. That's what Doomsday should should figure is is going on. No. No. It was the best you could do. Clean Water Act. That's the best you can do. That ain't sarcasm. I'm. That's total serious. Total seriousness. The best you can do. And catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure. Your government did what it was supposed to. And look what it accomplished. Pretty much the opposite, right? The Clean Water Act. Clean Water Act resulted in most water being filth. So, you, you want to try that again? You, you think you just need to update that? You think you lacked updates? That's why the Clean Water Act actually made most water poisonous. Because, oh, you didn't have updates. Legislation. Taxation. You know, it, do you think there's a solution there? You really do? You, you, really? The problem is cultural. The problem is cultural. There's nothing great, there's nothing superior about civilized culture. Civilized, that's just a name for your culture. And your culture sucks. It's gonna wipe out the planet before Doomsday gets home. <laughs> Who's gonna be there? If it takes me 50 years, are there gonna be people left? If there aren't, it's because of civilized culture. It's because you thought, well, no matter the cost, Stop equating humanity with one culture. It's not doing you any good. And stop thinking government's a problem. This is not. Those people aren't leaders. I'm not going to tell you not to vote. I'm not going to tell you to vote. Definitely not going to say vote or die. That's ridiculous. But I'll tell you one thing. The most powerful thing you could do. Talk to Gen Alpha. Tell them. Tell them that these lifestyles, no. They will not continue. Lifestyles you're living now, not going to continue. Your culture has never been sustainable. 
This multiplication that's happening right now, not so fruitful, is it? Never really been all that fruitful. So, I think that's it for this episode of Doomsy Doom Scroller. The Doomsy McDoom Scroller Show. I'm going to sign off right now because I don't think I got much more energy. I'm going to have to shut this ship down. Uh, Approaching some strange planet right now. I'm going to have to land, refuel, do something. I'll get back and broadcast again next time I can. I, I hope that you take the good news from this episode. I hope you see the proof. Government's not the problem. It's not. And, and there's good news in that. Because you can abandon a culture, but you know that there's no fix in your government. There ain't no fix in that. All right. Doomsie says, sayonara. <laughs>